Hello and welcome to my channel. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like this video. And thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you to my day ones, twos, and threes. Thank you to all my new subscribers that's coming in. That means well. Thank you so very much. I appreciate you all. And welcome, welcome, welcome. This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. So everything is alleged, some is not. And the fair act use is in my description box, y'all. So let's get to it, y'all. Let's get to it. First, I want to say happy Monday. I hope everybody is having a wonderful day. Please stay safe and all that good stuff. Please stay aware of your surroundings. And please, y'all, watch the company that you keep because it just may save your life or keep you out of trouble. Okay, y'all? So let's get to it y'all let's get to it so um i had to take a break from puffy for a little while y'all i just have to be completely honest i had to take a little break from all the stories that was coming out about p diddy and what he was doing to people and this and that and, that and this a lot of stuff just got really just ridiculous and just nasty sick 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 stuff that i had to just take a break from it okay so reports are coming in today that another lawsuit went in. A couple more lawsuits went in today on him. And my understanding, I think they're saying it's about up to 200 people now that has, you know, came forward to say that he did something to them, you know, in the past or recently, you know, ain't no telling. Okay, y'all. But the newest one that went in today, y'all, was even more sickening than the others. Okay. Um... If this is true, what this person is saying, this guy should be under the jail, okay, y'all? And there's no way that he should have got away with this stuff for this long, okay? So, basically, someone just came forward. They didn't mention the name. I didn't come across it yet, but I did check a couple of stories to see that they say the name, and they didn't. But this person is saying that this took place in 2005, y'all. And they're saying that it, it's a guy, and he is saying that um, when this happened, he was an expiring rapper. He was trying to get into the industry, okay? His family was kind of like, you know, talking to different peoples, and, and it landed them to Puffy. It led them to Puffy, okay, y'all? And... This person is saying that they was at during the time that they had their encounter with Puffy. He was only T to the E to the N. Okay, y'all? Years old. That's how old he was. And first they said the mom, the parents dropped them off. And then they said that somebody that was hired by the family, the parents, dropped the kid off to Puffy. Now, mind you, y'all, if I had a child that had talent and I was, you know, checking around with different people, first off, ain't no way in the world that I would have an audition at a hotel. That's number one. There's no way that I would let my child have an audition in a hotel room. That makes no sense to me. What what happened to the studios and stuff like that when you were auditioning for stuff? When did it become a thing to audition in or sign contracts in hotel rooms? The, the same thing that Rihanna did with um Jay-Z. She was too young to be in a hotel room with Jay-Z. And she didn't have a lawyer. She didn't have her parents there to make sure nothing was go wrong. And this is the same thing that this person is saying right now too. So, that, to me, Jay-Z and, and Puffy been tag team and doing the same thing for years. My personal opinion. Okay, y'all? Um, this this person that just came forward said that they this was their age, T to the E to the N. And somebody left him, delivered him basically to Puffy in his hotel room. He said that Puffy offered him a drink, some pop, y'all. A can of pop or something like that. And he said he drunk the pop and he started feeling funny. And he said he think that it was laced with something. Some street pharmacy stuff. This is what he's saying. He said that basically Puffy, you know, went in on him right away. Soon as he started feeling and looking as if that something was, you know, 
taken control of his thoughts and mind and this and that and that and this. He said Puffy stood up and pulled out his pack of whack. Okay, y'all? And it basically told him to pucker up. That he was going to have to do stuff that he didn't want to do if he wanted to be in the industry. And he said he jabbed it, right? The pack of whacker in his mouth. Yeah. And he continued to do it over and over again. And he said he passed out while it was taking place. He said when he woke up, his back door was sore and everything. And clothes was, you know, not on like it was and stuff like that. And he was basically delivered back to his people as if nothing happened, y'all. You know, I, for the love of me, I do not understand the parents. Everybody want to blame Puffy for this and that and this and everybody coming forth and this and that and that and this. But this wouldn't have never took place if they were being a parent. Who does this, y'all? Who does? They practically hand, put them in a, a gift box with a bow on it and delivered them to them. Who does that? I just don't understand it. When did it come to a point where your parents is not there when you are wanting to discuss your child's future as an artist? When did it come to a hotel room being the office? Like, I don't, I don't understand this. All of that was red flags to me from the start. It didn't make any sense. And I don't understand how in the world can people, you know, save face and pop out now and say, oh, he did this. And you don't take no accountability for it at all. It makes no sense. He said that his his parents noticed that he was acting different. So they was asking him what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong. And he said he finally told his parents what happened to him in that room. And instead of them getting on the phone, calling the police, taking his child to the doctor, and getting them checked out and all of that stuff. And, you know, handling their business. They kept quiet. They said they were scared. Now, the the thing that gets me with that I'm scared thing. If you knew what Puffy was about in the first place. Why would you even leave your child with him? That's number one. You had to know that there were rumors going around or something. For, you know that people that try to tell on him that things happen. You have to know something for you to be scared in the first place. That this wasn't the person that you shouldn't have even been trying to talk to for to help your, your, your child's career. Were they smoking their kneecaps off too? Did they get paid off? I'm wondering now. Now that, the you know, he's grown, he's coming forth and saying what happened, but his parents didn't do a thing. He said he ended up having a lot of issues mentally and all the kind of stuff. He ended up not being able to go to school. He ended up being put on homeschooling and all kind of stuff after this happened to him. Because he said that he went through a lot of phases after that. And I'm sure he did. The fact that you watching the man on TV. Study getting awards after awards. Being praised by these award shows and commercials and signing new artists and all kind of stuff and he did this to you and your parents didn't say nothing and i'm wondering now did the parents get paid to be quiet because everybody else got paid to be quiet while their you know loved one was getting you know used and abused by this man so it makes me wonder now that this t to the e in year old parents get paid off too to be quiet because a real parent wouldn't have been quiet, y'all. A real parent wouldn't have been scared to uh, take this man to court and get justice for their child. Who sits back and be quiet like that? Like, I I just don't get it, y'all. The, the parents, they should be charged. If you're going to charge Puffy, charge them too for even leaving him. That's, to me, that's neglect. That you would leave a child with somebody that you have, you don't know nothing about. 
The person that delivered him, they said that somebody that they paid to to take him to, over to the room, which sound a little bit odd too, because why would you pay somebody to take your child to deliver your child to go see Puffy? Most parents would have been excited during that time to go deliver their child themselves, or bring their child themselves. Something just seems weird about this. Now I'm starting to understand why a lot of people is saying that a lot of these stories seem a little bit odd and they seem a little bit off, okay? If you got money to pay somebody to deliver people to somebody and all of this stuff, then why was you even trying to be a celebrity in the first place, your child? If you got it like that already. It just seems like a lot of, some of these stories, it seemed like they're fabricated or they just seem like some, some people were smoking their kneecaps off and they got paid under the table and now they want to come back out and get some more money. I'm just saying, y'all, because something just seems weird to me now about some of this stuff. And Lord knows I don't want to take up for no P. Diddy. But you cannot always blame the person when you give raft stuff and bring it to them. The thing of it is, is if you have somebody that is sick, 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 sick in the head. Okay, y'all? You cannot tempt them by putting everything. That's just like somebody got a sweet tooth, but they can't have no candy. But you give an interview, put them in a waiting area, and ain't nothing in the room but candy. What you think they're going to do? And they got a weakness for candy. They're going to eat a piece of that candy, y'all. Okay? Is it their fault that they ate the candy? They couldn't control themselves? Do you just blame them for everything? Or do you blame the people that put them in there with the candy? Just to see what they get a piece. You know what I'm saying, y'all? If somebody got a foot fetish and they in a room with everybody with their shoes off just dangling their toes around, everybody, that person going to get to sweating and looking around, licking their lips like, oh, Lord. Okay? So why in the world would you take a T to the E-N, year old, to a grown man's room and leave him there and you know nothing about this man? Not nothing. But you claim after your child told you, you was petrified and scared that the outcome if you told. So you have to know something about them before you left them there. Which tells you that a lot of people out here is sick individuals that they would even put their child in that type of situation in the first place. Y'all, okay? Ever since we've been talking about the parents and this and that and this, there have been people out here trying to defend some of these parents. They've been defending Aaliyah's mama, saying that Aaliyah's mama didn't know what was going on between her and, her and R. Kelly. Is it because he was riding her too? Because word on the street is he was going with her too. But a good parent going to keep up with their kids regardless if she was riding them or not. She still would have been keeping up with where her daughter was, what her daughter was doing and everything. We see now that Aaliyah was all over the place, y'all. At all of these nasty guys' parties, all of them. She was with every each and last one of them. Laying there right to slap dab in the middle of the bed. Y'all see that big white bed in the backyard. Aaliyah right there in the middle. Just enjoying herself like, who's next? Okay. She was with the worst of the worst of these guys out here. And she stayed around these guys constantly. And they want to defend Aaliyah's mama. Are you serious? Soon as Aaliyah came in the industry, it ain't like Aaliyah had to work her way up this and that. that and it's when Aaliyah hit the scene, Aaliyah was out there doing her thing. Her music hit, then she started doing movies. They, Her mama can't say, well, I had to work. That's why I had to keep stay home and my child had to go out and do what she had to do because I still had to work to pay the bills until she made it. Aaliyah made it right away, y'all. She did. And nobody's taking accountability for nothing. Aaliyah's uncle that was supposed to be watching her for the mama. And I'm going to be I'm gonna be completely honest with y'all. Uh, some of these uncles out here is worse than the, the, the people's in the streets. Oh, I know. I come from a big family. Okay? 
So even leaving your child with with the with the brother or whatever that's in the family ain't all that, that what it's cracked up to be. Okay, y'all. So I just say this. To me, they need to start checking some of these these parents. They need to start going after some of these parents. Look at Usher. They're saying he went to the hospital, broke off, back door just ripped off. Okay, y'all. P. Diddy. That's what they're saying. P. Diddy did this to, to Usher. His mama is yet to talk about anything. But is she out here styling and profiling with that money? Oh, yes, yeah, she is. But you don't have nothing to say. And you done left your child with this sick individual that's wrestling with him over cereal in the morning. This is why it's so easy for all of these people to come out and say, well, my child went to the hotel for an interview for an audition and, and he did this and he did that too. Because look at uh, look at the trail of people. This is why it's so easy for everybody to come out and say this. And all she have to prove is after they went on that interview or that audition with him, that this is when he started having the issues. If her child was not having issues before the P. Diddy audition in the hotel room, and then afterwards he started having issues with school, had to get taken out, had to start seeing a therapist and all of this, they got him right there. Something had to take place for this to go down. And this child is a grown person now, and he's telling his experience. My thing is, stop letting the parents off, though, too. Look at all of these people that played a part in R. Kelly's whole little circle. But he's the only one locked up. They had grown people over there passing R. Kelly's number out to these younger, these little ones. They were going over to these little ones asking them for their number. R. Kelly wants your number. And they was taking it back to her. Why ain't any of them going to jail, y'all? That's my thing. I, I don't understand it. Why ain't any of them getting in any trouble about this, too? Make it make sense, y'all. That's all I got to say. But anyway, I just wanted to let y'all know another one, y'all. Another one. And now they're saying the count is up to 200 people that is suing Diddy, y'all. And y'all wonder why his money gone. You wonder why the money didn't go. Even he know he not getting out on bail. When he was even on the phone with his son. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Some people saying it was an AI. I don't know. I wasn't there. I didn't make it. But um, I think he's stupid enough to talk on the phone to his sons. I do. Because he was stupid enough to do all of this. Anyway, y'all, prayers up for the, the real victims and stuff and what they had to go through. They had to deal with Puffy. And justice for, for all of these people. Not only justice from uh, P. Diddy, but justice from the parents that was careless that let them, led them to these individuals. Okay, y'all? Anyway, please like, share, and subscribe if you like the video. And thanks for watching, y'all. Peace.